Hello to everyone and the internet. It is currently Wednesday, December 26. I am Nathan of Washington, and you are watching Culture Shock, the only show on the internet that knows how to separate an issue of culture from an issue of politics. And this is the news. So, uh, Howard Dean. Do you remember Howard Dean? Uh, he says that we need to stay in Afghanistan and spread feminism. <laughs> oh, I remember Howard Dean. I bring back the White House. Uh, or, uh, no, it was. No, it was. Take back the White House. Ha <laughs> And the Democrats won't lost that race. Gee, I wonder why. The American people really are not in the habit of electing people who are uh, too crazy like that. <laughs> it's a good thing he didn't win that one, honestly. I'm glad he didn't. But he says that uh, there's two quotes from him here. It says, uh, by withdrawing our troops from Afghanistan, you are condemning millions of women to the Stone Age. Well, Bronze Age, really. Uh, no education, no choice about who they marry. Or no, no education, no choice about who they marry. They will become property when the Taliban takes over. Is that what you really want, Ro? <sighs> Again, like I said, Stone Age, no, Bronze Age. Completely different. And also, those women are not our citizens. They are not our responsibility. I mean, it sucks that that would happen, but they're not our responsibility. It's none of our business. Why are we interfering in the Middle East? It has nothing to do with us. We have no real investment there. See, when people talk about keeping our troops in the Middle East, saying why we shouldn't pull out, this is usually the best they can do. This is the best they have. Howard fucking Dean, of all people. And this is the best excuse they have. Uh, 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 you know. Just. Alright. Spreading progressivism. That's the last thing we need to do. Because far left progressivism is what's screwing up our country. Like, we need to spread that anywhere else. <laughs> but when talking about the Middle East, this is the best that the establishment has to offer. It's like, oh, we should stay over there because, uh, you know, because progressivism, we need to spread feminism, uh, you're condemning these women to the Stone Age, blah, blah, blah. Again, Bronze Age. Uh, yeah. Howard Dean. Just, wow. <laughs> Bottom line is, those women... Not our citizens. Not our responsibility. None of our business. There are no excuses for all these ridiculous proxy wars, you know, hosted by the American bully state. We are not rent-a-cops. So stop it. Spreading progressivism is the last thing we need. Uh, Klaus Relotius, uh, st stealing your money like a boss. Uh, Klaus Relotius is a, uh, German, uh, reporter who it was caught making up stories that supported liberal and globalist agendas for CNN and as well as some German outlets as well. Yeah. But if that wasn't bad enough, wait till you hear about this. He also created a fake orphan fund for uh, supposed Syrian children. But then suddenly the money all just disappeared. And about the time it disappeared, his bank account started getting a little bigger. And honestly, if you put two and two together... Honestly, what do people might want to do with this guy? Just imagine what they might want to do to him. He basically stole your money. He, he emotionally manipulated you, grandstanded you, got all your money, and then it went straight into his bank account. Real piece of work, this guy. 
I say fuck him up. I mean, I didn't donate to it. He doesn't get any of my money. But uh, if he did, wow. I am sympathetic to anyone who has messed with this guy, totally. Fuck him up. He stole your money. And he was making up fake stories. He was caught doing it. This guy's a piece of shit. Uh, Klaus Melotius. Kick his ass. Now, but now I suppose that he's got your money. He'll he'll drop off the face of the earth. He'll probably be in some foreign island somewhere, so hiding out. Maybe the Cayman Islands or somewhere where where they don't have any extradition treaties with the United States or Germany. Some place where he'd be perfectly safe. Man, I'm telling you, if you ever find him, just go ahead and fuck him up. Just. This guy's a piece of crap. It's an absolute piece of crap. Lying to the people and stealing their money. Sickening. ISIS is now threatening England with uh, drone-delivered weapons. There was a claim that the uh, the photos showing the drones were it was photoshopped, like maybe it wasn't real. But uh, I examined those photos pretty closely myself on the webpage where my sources provided the photos. And believe me, I, I know how to look for whether or not a photo has really been photoshopped or not. Like there's a certain visual cues. And I mean, it could be. But... Is it really worth risking the possibility that the, the photos were faked? I think erring on a side of caution and preparing to defend yourself in the event that it's real is a, more, uh, is a much more reasonable position than just to assume that it was a bluff. Sure, you can call your blu their bluff, but if you call the bluff and you're wrong, it's you who suffers, not them. So if I were England, I wouldn't want to mess with that. I'd want to prepare myself for the possibility, maybe have them examine the photos for any signs of tampering, and maybe even call out for assistance from an ally. Uh, I mean, even the United States might be tempted to want to defend England, send some troops over there to, to assist. Now mind you, again, I'm not saying we should be starting wars anymore, but if an ally asks, uh, asks us to come and defend them, and, you know, ask permission, then perhaps we should. As far as I know, England... <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> as far as I know, England is an ally, although their government is completely despotic and tyrannical by now. But the possibility that ISIS could be attacking with uh, drone-delivered weapons, we're talking about gas grenades, bombs, you name it. If it's true, it's f fucking scary as hell. It's not something that I would be comfortable thinking about, but it is possible. So we should be on the lookout for possibly them threatening the U.S. with a similar claim as well. Syria is now celebrating Christmas, and they are glad that foreign actors, such as the United States, are leaving and that ISIS militants have pretty much all but lost all influence in the region. This is basically a well-earned breath of relief. They can finally breathe easy. Just breathe in that air. They can finally relax. Things have finally calmed down, and now they can celebrate their very first Christmas. they got a nice big old Christmas tree right in the middle of the, the, the central area of the capital city. If I can remember, uh, I think it was Damascus. Yeah, it was Damascus is the capital of Syria. You got a nice big old Christmas tree, everything looks all nice, they're happy, ready to celebrate. Good for them. Good for them. Syria's earned a nice breath breath of relief after all the insanity in the Middle East of late. Time to calm down, time for healing, time to repair. And what better time than Christmas?
Because Christmas is a, is a time where in which, sure, suicide rates are high among some, but overall, most people tend to be a lot happier and a lot more given. So it's a great time for healing. So I hope Syria can look forward to it, a, a great new new year coming up. If they make it to the new year, I hope they uh, have a wonderful year to look forward to. Uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg is now alive and well after surviving a, after a cancer surgery success. She's apparently been released from the hospital and is doing fine. For some, this will be good news. For the rest of us, maybe not so much. Since Ruth Bader Ginsburg is literally the model of the career politician who just refuses to retire. I believe the quote was, politicians and diapers should be changed regularly, both for the same reason. That's a great quote. I think it was Robin Williams, actually. Bottom line is, Ruth Bader Ginsburg should be changed like a dirty diaper. But hey, at least she survived cancer, so that's cool. She can go back to her family. They get a few more years of her left. The, the Ginsburgs can celebrate their uh, cancer survivor, I guess, grandmother. So she, she is fairly old. And considering that the survival rate of cancer is pretty low, she has done something that uh, is quite the feat that only a few have succeeded in doing. So that's actually fairly awesome. Retire from the Supreme Court, but go back to your family and support surviving cancer. Uh, Trump and Melania make a surprise visit to Iraq, while of course defending the Trump's decision to withdraw. Now some might say, oh, there's still ISIS, there's still problems in the Middle East, we can't leave yet, we made a mess and we have to clean it up. And I would agree, but... If we continue to clean it up, that might be used as justification for more proxy wars. The longer we stay, the more likely it is that the uh, that the um, the military com the industrial military complex and the government and the establishment will want us to stay. The longer we stay, the more they'll want us to do more. But we will be creating opportunities by withdrawing the troops. We can cut back on the military spending and put an end to the uh, growth of the, the military-industrial complex and the establishment. No more of this ridiculous American empire. You know, get out of the business of maintaining an empire and just start running an effing an F country. And you know what? So as far as I'm concerned, ISIS has been largely defeated for the most part. This whole drone thing is obviously like they're last uh, desperate attempt to establish what they wanted to establish in the first place. Bottom line is our history in the Middle East, we, we're troublemakers. America is a bunch of troublemakers. So I defend the decision as well. The, the, dis, the visit to the troops in Iraq was mostly a, um, mostly a conjugal visit of sorts. Visiting them uh, for Christmas for some special function. Which is always a nice thing for the president to do. So ultimately I'd say defending the decision was right to do. The visit to Iraq uh, though was very nice of him and Melania. And for the final story today Japan is going to resurrect commercial whaling from the justifiably dead. This could potentially create a new, a new whaling industry just as devastating as the last. As if it wasn't bad enough that whales, uh, certain species of whales have been hella extinct. They gotta go back and do this. Man, Japan lately, I don't know what is up with these guys. Like, if I don't know if you heard this, but Japan's empress was actually considering dumping the rest of the radioactive dumping the rest of the radioactive material from Fukushima straight into the ocean. What the fuck? Japan lately has been a horrible environmental actor. 
un un unbelievable. Why are they doing this? I mean, if they if they do resurrect Marshall Whaling, uh, it should be treated as a crime, and then therefore they should be put, they should be stopped and punished because that is not okay. I mean, look what the whaling industry, the old whaling industry, for us before it was ended, did to an entire species, the humpback. There's very few humpbacks left. I mean, many female humpbacks were torn open and killed and processed as meat while still carrying their unborn infants. Sickening. They were they're pregnant. It's like murdering a pregnant woman. I mean, sure. Sure. Let's just say, let's just say that people are supposed to eat meat. I don't think they are, but if they were, uh, don't you think we should be doing it the way wolves do it? Or the way other predators do it? Not, uh, the sickening commercial industry that kills them by the millions? Uh, essentially causing the species to go extinct? That completely throws nature's checks and balances completely out of whack. Nature is a complex system. And we're, uh, and and frequently man lives like he is somehow above that system. Like he's somehow better than nature. Or when he's not, he's openly defying the system and screwing it up. Mankind is uniquely arrogant on this earth. And who knows how many more species in the future we can bring to extinction. Especially if Japan starts instituting nonsense like this. Anyway, that's it for the Culture Shock today, folks. I'm out. Thank you.